All right, let's look at what happened in season one of The Great, an occasionally true story. Catherine is a fresh-faced German idealist who ends up betrothed with the ultimate frat boy emperor of Russia, Peter. She enters the Union with naive optimism. Peter runs an almost cult-like court where everyone fawns over his every word and indulges in his every whim. His inner circle consists of his best friend Grigor, whose wife he is sleeping with, Archie, a representative of the church prone to visions from God, Arkady, a somewhat articulate yes-man, and Orlo, the educated voice of reason that is often belittled and ignored. His only other confidants are his flighty Aunt Elizabeth, a resigned-to-his-fate General Velimentov, and his mother's corpse that is prominently displayed in a hallway, for reasons. Catherine has had dreams of a great love and a bear. Peter gifts her a bear at their wedding feast, but quickly shows he is not to be her great love. The ladies of the court prove to be vapid and interested in nothing but fashion and gossip, spending their day rolling balls on the lawn. She finds a friend in Muriel, a former lady of the court who was forced into servitude because of her family's misdeeds. Peter agrees to allow Catherine to open a school, and she befriends Orlo while in the library looking for books. They bond over their shared love of reading and philosophy. When he discovers she intends to educate women, Peter burns down the building, instead of, you know, just telling her no. Drunk and stupid at a party, Peter shoots her pet bear and Catherine snaps. She slaps him in front of everyone and retreats to the library to cry. Peter finds her and they argue, resulting in Peter becoming violent. Feeling trapped and alone, Catherine decides to escape. Her brilliant plan involves mailing herself to Austria. But Peter finds out and nearly lets her drown as punishment. The next morning, she has decided to end it all feeling like her ambitions of greatness can never be fulfilled. But Muriel reminds her that if something were to happen to Peter, the crown would pass to her. She says perhaps Peter is not her great love, but maybe Russia is, and thus begins the plot to overthrow the emperor. Peter is unsatisfied with his new wife and seeks advice from his Aunt Elizabeth while she attempts to train butterflies, you know, as you do. He reasons that everyone likes him except Catherine, so the problem must be her. Elizabeth reminds him that his mother struggled to like him, once calling him rancid, and suggests perhaps Catherine saw the same in him. This works because of Peter's strange obsession with his mother. He sets up an apology breakfast with special bacon and strawberries, determined to find things they have in common. Now through this whole scene, he is wearing a large pearl necklace and we find out it is his mother's, and he wears it when he wants to feel close to her. But seriously, it's from her corpse that's in the hallway. I can't even with this guy. Anyway, he promises not to hit her again, to get her a new bear, and suggests they find her a lover that can please her. Catherine listens, but ultimately calls the strawberries and his ideas rancid and storms out. While hunting, Peter casually decides to kill Catherine and try again to find a suitable wife. Archie and Orlo both try to change his mind, but he seems resolute. Looking for allies for her attempted coup, Catherine turns her eyes to Orlo. Muriel suggests Catherine should seduce him, but the attempt goes poorly for so many reasons. Catherine ends up just telling him the plan, and he shuts her down, saying she should never speak of it again. We find out that Muriel and the Archbishop are cousins, and she tells him a cover story in case Orlo talks. She then goes back to her old room from when she was a noble, but she gets caught by Lady Svenska, who orders guards to lash her. Looking for Muriel, Catherine finds her in the servants' quarters, having her lashes tended to. Archie shows up and tells them he had a vision, a ridiculously transparent attempt to warn Catherine that if she doesn't act happy, she will be killed. Taking his advice, Catherine spends the evening pretending to be submissive and happy. She explains to Peter that her mood was because of her time of the month, which he accepts like the dimwit he is and reconsiders killing her. At council, we meet Rostov, a peach grower, who has an issue with Peter's latest decree that young men should not wear beards. It seems he has unfortunate problems with his face and fears his wife will no longer love him if he shaves it. Peter is uncaring and orders him to shave. Orlo protests, and Peter threatens him with a knife, but ultimately orders Orlo to use it to shave Rostov. Appearing in Catherine's room covered in blood, Orlo is now ready to join her side. Peter finds Leo, the son of a well-known ladies' man, to be Catherine's lover. 
She rejects him at first, but he explains that he will be killed if she does not report satisfaction, so she agrees to pretend to enjoy his company. At a military briefing, Peter feels intimidated by the officers who were friends of his father's. He attempts to show his strategic prowess, but his foolish ideas are struck down by the men with actual battle experience. Orlo wants to get General Anton to join their cause. Catherine uses Elizabeth to locate Ivan, Peter's long-lost half-brother, who could be a foil to their plan. No one knows he's been hidden in a room in the palace all this time. As revenge for Muriel's lashes, Catherine embarrasses Lady Svenska by decorating a tent in the same pattern as her dress. But turns out she is Anton's wife, so that bridge is burnt and the ladies of the court turn on Catherine. Peter must give a speech at the dedication of the new statue of his father, Peter the Great. He struggles not being emotional while talking about him, and Catherine suggests real emotion is a strength. Emboldened by her, he ends up stabbing an officer who mocks him during the speech. Finally, Catherine gives in and begins a real relationship with Leo. News reaches the palace that the patriarch of the church has died, and it is up to Peter to appoint a new one. Orlo and Archie each have an idea who it should be, but Peter is intimidated by the old men and doesn't want to make a choice. After one of the candidates literally lights himself on fire in protest of Peter's regime, Peter tells Archie to go have a vision so God can decide. The ladies of the court have started a rumor about Catherine sleeping with a horse. Trying to win them back for political reasons, Catherine visits each of them and gifts them a fancy egg. When Lady Svenska invites Catherine to tea, it turns out to be a setup for them to abuse her while dancing. Svenska tells her not to try and take her ladies again. Peter goes to Leo and says they must be friends, something Catherine sees and despises. Leo explains that he is falling for her, so he will do whatever it takes to make the situation work, and they continue their passionate affair. Archie resorts to shrooms to force a vision. While he is tripping balls, Catherine encounters him and he thinks she's an angel. She tells him to choose himself as patriarch because he is willing to speak to women and the other candidates are not. Archie tells Peter of the vision and he agrees. Elizabeth advises Catherine to be the voice of the ladies of the court as they have no actual power. So at the celebration of Archie's appointment, Catherine speaks to them and discovers they need carriage repairs and doctors. She also stages a reprimand of Muriel to put an end to the mocking and garner some respect. Elizabeth takes Catherine to the war front, where they hand out macaroons and pose for a portrait, giving her time to take in how horrific war is. She becomes convinced her play for power must not include bloodshed. Grigor's jealousy and rage surface when he sees Georgina's bruising after a particularly wild dalliance with Peter. In a moment of fury, he laces Peter's borscht with arsenic-filled paint. Very quickly, Peter becomes gravely ill and the whole palace erupts in a fervor about what his death will mean for the leadership of the country. Catherine and her conspirators quietly celebrate the crown falling into her lap, but when she is brought before the Senate, it is revealed how ill-prepared for actual leadership she is, and her embarrassment leads to a panic attack. When it's discovered that Peter was poisoned, they realize that someone else might be attempting a coup for Ivan to take power. The palace goes into lockdown and Catherine and Elizabeth are confined to Peter's quarters. Everyone from Orlo to Muriel and even Peter insist that Catherine should kill Ivan to prevent a civil war and secure her claim to the throne. She meets with the boy but can't bring herself to do it. After Catherine leaves, Elizabeth carries out the awful deed. As the power players begin to rally behind Catherine, Peter wakes up on his way to a full recovery. After his brush with death, Peter desires to change, but isn't sure how. Elizabeth urges him to focus on siring an heir. After enduring strange fertility rituals from Elizabeth and Dr. Chekhov, Catherine and Peter actually share some bonding moments. She encourages him to bring more art and science to the palace. Peter discusses parachutes with Catherine's servant Vlad, and Catherine invents a new game for the ladies of the court to play. Leo struggles with the reality of his situation not happy with Peter's newfound interest in his wife. Catherine apologizes and ends up telling Leo she loves him. All of the talk of science concerns Archie, who tries to convince Peter the dreams he had while sick were a sign he should turn more towards God. Archie meets with Catherine to discuss his concerns, but when she doesn't relent, he threatens her. As she starts to respond, he hushes her, and she bites his fingers. 
This was shocking yet poetic, being the same fingers he used for a virginity check the day of her arrival. Peter is almost convinced Archie was right when a raven appears in his bedroom, but Archie was seen with an empty birdcage and Peter retaliates for the attempted manipulation. Orlo decides they could get Velimentov on their side and travels to speak with him. The carriage overturns and he gets lost in the woods. When he stumbles upon a Swedish soldier holding several Russians hostage, he attempts to use words to save the situation, but ultimately ends up killing the Swede. Catherine hopes with his new attitude, Peter may be willing to reinstate Muriel as a lady of the court. Peter reveals what her father did to earn the demotion, and it is truly heinous. I'm not even going to say it. If you don't remember, I'll just say it involved Peter's departed mother. Catherine decides to get Muriel her dog Bellini back instead. Muriel is thrilled, but then Peter uses the animal for a parachute demonstration. Luckily, the parachute works, and Catherine is happy that science is finally being celebrated at court. The court admires new art, and Peter learns it's possible to cry tears of joy. Catherine gives him a printing press, which Archie protests. Can't have the masses sharing ideas, after all. Peter is still upset with Archie, so he embraces the press, thanking Catherine by fluttering her butterfly. She is troubled by actually enjoying the stallions with Peter but Elizabeth helps her see that physical pleasures can be separated from matters of the heart. Peter puts together a surprise science party for Catherine, though his version of science includes electrocuting children and lighting farts on fire. During the party, Peter brags about his encounter to Leo, who spirals into depression and jealousy. On a drunken bender, he uses the press to distribute raunchy cartoons about several court members, including Catherine. Muriel teases Vlad, but decides to give him his first kiss. She considers going further, but discovers pox on his back. She immediately stuffs him in a cabinet and gets Catherine and the doctor. The doctor says they will burn him and any serfs with markings to stop the outbreak. Catherine goes to Orlo for help saving the serfs, but he is drunk with Velimentov. He sobers enough to tell her about variolation, which is like old school vaccination. No one goes for the idea, and Peter returns to some old habits. Catherine goes to the place where they are burning serfs and says goodbye to Vlad. Strengthening her resolve, she inoculates herself in front of everyone to prove it's safe. Unfortunately, she is quarantined, and Peter bans the practice. Catherine watches the fires in the distance, feeling helpless and heartbroken. Peter gives Catherine a giant diamond, but she remains angry over the death of Vlad and the other serfs. She gets him to reconsider assassinating a Swedish ambassador and set up peace talks instead. She tries to get Velimentov on her side, but he remains distracted by her beauty. Peter and the King of Sweden, Hugo, turn out to be two peas in a pod, both childish and overshadowed by their father's legacy. Catherine learns from Queen Agnes some of the troubles the kingdom has had with progressive ideas. All seems to be going well until the matter of St. Petersburg throws a wrench into the deal. Peter storms off and vows to defeat them on the battlefield, but Catherine steps in, claiming to have overheard Peter talking in his sleep with a plan where they can all win. The kings agree and shake hands. Afterwards, Peter thanks Catherine, saying he knows he doesn't talk in his sleep. Having watched her successful negotiations, Velimentov is more confident in Catherine's leadership abilities and is swayed to join her side. Leo and Grigor bond over the difficulty of their respective situations. Feeling ignored and like he is just going to end up heartbroken, Leo leaves Catherine a note to say he's leaving. Mariel stops him and reveals their plans for Catherine's takeover. When Catherine returns, Leo eagerly joins their cause. During the monthly meeting of aristocrats, our conspirator crew sees the opportunity to get more people on board with Catherine as leader. Newcomer Velimentov asks when they will kill Archie, which Mariel shuts down immediately because she is so close with him. Later, Valimentov and Orlo discuss taking out Archie in secret. Orlo is assigned to meet with Raskolnikov and discovers him easily bought. Mariel meets with a newly shaven Rostov and he is easily swayed. Leo and Velimentov are assigned to meet with Gorky, both having a previous relationship with him, but he declines. Leo lets slip that Catherine is the one planning the coup and the two see no choice but to kill him to protect their secret. 
Peter is enjoying his newfound admiration since ending the war, but becomes concerned after his bodyguard and Gorky turn up dead. He surrounds himself and Catherine with guards and has everyone in the court tortured to uncover anyone plotting to overthrow him. The torture consists of everything from breaking fingernails to eels shocking their faces. Horrified at the proceedings, Catherine insists that she be tortured as well in solidarity with the court. Rostov decides he should kill Peter, and Mariel shows him the secret entrance to Peter's room. When Rostov attacks, he is quickly taken down by Peter, Grigor, and Georgina. Feeling like they caught the plotter, Peter orders everything back to normal. The court is understandably upset with Peter, but Catherine makes a lovely unifying speech that wins everyone over. As they part for the evening, Peter confesses that he has fallen in love with her. Back in her room, Catherine discovers that she is pregnant. After a period of numbness from discovering her pregnancy, Catherine decides on her birthday that it is time to make her move. She goes to Velimentov and has him train her in the best way to stab someone. Orlo suggests that they should have Peter arrested and put away, but Catherine insists that she should kill him. She secretly tells Orlo to kill Archie, which he was planning on doing anyway. Peter struggles to get a gift for Catherine and summons Leo for help. He laughs at Leo's gift for Catherine, thinking it just a simple peach. Later, Peter, Grigor, and Georgina mock them as they watch Leo give her present and are shocked that the peach contains a ring inside and Catherine is overjoyed with the gift. Peter decides he must kill Leo in order to win Catherine's affections for himself. He takes Leo hunting and they attempt to shoot him, but do so poorly enough that Catherine will never believe it an accident and they must come up with a new plan. Elizabeth administers a pregnancy test that involves urinating on a pile of wheat. Elizabeth discovers Catherine's plot and is somewhat swayed by Catherine's points. After making Catherine promise not to harm Peter, she decides to go to her country house for a week while it all plays out. Catherine is ready for her murder lunch in a violently pink dress and a dagger in her pocket. Yes, her amazing dress has pockets. Peter throws a wrench in her plan by inviting her hero Voltaire to the lunch as her gift. She enjoys talking philosophy with him, but after he leaves, she pulls out the dagger. Peter then reads a letter he says is from Leo claiming to have left forever. Seeing through this obvious ploy, Catherine attacks. Peter fights her off, and assuming she is just reacting to Leo leaving, locks her in his room alone to cool off. Muriel sees Peter very much alive and becomes convinced the coup will fail. She goes to Archie for advice and finds Orlo about to attack him. Archie knocks Orlo out with his very large Bible and counsels Muriel to think about herself and tell Peter about the coup. Desperate to be a lady again, Muriel finds Peter and takes him to Catherine's wall with all their plans and tells him Catherine is pregnant. Velimentov has the military gathered just waiting for Catherine's signal. He sees an officer sneaking away and follows him. Realizing he's a spy, Velimentov shoots him and the uprising officially begins. Muriel tells Catherine what she has done, saying that she hopes that she will see it's all for the best. Peter confronts Catherine, but she uses her pregnancy to stall him. She named the baby Paul and asked Peter to consider what is best for him and suggests Peter abdicate the throne to her. Peter seems to consider for a moment, but then says he has Leo held in a secure location and will have him killed if she doesn't call off the coup. Catherine goes to Velimentov, who urges her to think of Russia and the hope that she has given them. Catherine goes to see Leo and tearfully explains everything. He says he understands and that while his fate was her, hers was always Russia, and they share a last kiss. Running back to the palace, Catherine gives Velimentov the signal, and we hear his gunshot, signaling the uprising will commence. And that's where we end Season 1 of The Great.